In 2018, Uganda plans to start the process of building a crude export pipeline, a refinery, central processing facilities, and storage tanks. And the country requires close to $15 billion to finance these activities over the next three to five years. Those are huge amounts of capital. Uh, that's almost half our GDP. Uganda has a GDP of 30 billion, and we need to raise 15 billion. So I think it shows you that that requires outside capital to come in. Uganda has invited China to expand its presence in the emerging oil and gas sector. China is already financing major infrastructure projects in the country. These include hydroelectricity dams, major road highways, and their plans to contribute to Uganda's standard gauge railway as well. We are very interested in this country, and now, uh, as we said in this event, we are very happy to study all the potentials and the opportunities of this country and to uh, make the decision whether we can do more things in this country. Uganda has confirmed it has oil reserves amounting to 6.5 billion barrels. The country also has an estimated 500 cubic feet of natural gas. The confirmation of commercially viable quantities of oil and gas has created a lot of interest in Uganda and credit from China could be the game changer in the sector. However, market analysts warn that volatile global oil prices may affect Uganda's competitiveness. But at the current rate of $54 a barrel, local bankers say Uganda is safe. We had a spike for a very short period of time and we got confused that $100 oil was sustainable. So $54 oil uh, for Uganda is a, a very, very attractive price. Um, the oil, as you know, is very close to the ground, comes out at 2 to $3. Um, gets to Tanga for another $12. I think there's enough margin there to raise prices to make Uganda work. Only 8% of the oil-rich Alberta and Grabin in western Uganda has been explored. This means more exploration opportunities are available as the country prepares to begin production in 2020. Michael Balekesi, GTN, Kampala, Uganda.